hello, hello. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how it was that I came to be a PC gamer. I had said that I was going to do this video at some point, and here we are. Go ahead and do it today. Funny thing, it wasn't even probably, I don't know, a little over a year ago that I was pretty adamant that console was the only way to play, that PCs were a bunch of bull crap. but you know what? And then I built my first PC, spent some time with mouse and keyboard, and that took some time. It wasn't right away, but now it is certainly the definitive way to play games, in my opinion. So I'm not even worried about these new consoles and their problems because I'm not going to be investing in those at all. I'm just going to continue to play on my PC. And this PC right here is my more powerful PC out of the two that I've built in the recent past. If you see any of my other videos, you know that I did a, a computer with, an, with a 3600. 6 core 12 thread Ryzen 5 3600 and a little bit of a story behind that that I had put up whenever I previewed that computer and this particular computer and that computer had a, a Ryzen excuse me a Radeon RX 5600 XT which at the time whenever I built it was the newest of the Radeon graphics cards uh, the 57 had already been out. Just a 5700 had been, already been out for a little while, and they had just released the 5600 XT. Uh, surprisingly enough, that's the one that I currently have on my VR setup. And also, I do a little bit of sim racing, and it's where I have my sim racing setup as well. So. It's been really, it's been a really great computer. I, I can't complain at all. But this computer that I'm playing on now with a 3700X and um, a, a Radeon RX 5700 is setting in my office, and it is, it's more, it's the more powerful computer, obviously. Uh, both of those computers are running 16 gigabytes of RAM. But the 3700X has 3600 megahertz RAM in it, and the uh, 3600 has only 3200 megahertz RAM, uh, Vengeance RAM. Not that there's that much of a difference between it, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. And so here we are. We running on the 3700X with the Radeon RX 5700 
and I cannot help but be completely and totally enamored by Big Navi now that I've seen it. I really want to acquire a 6800 6800 XT graphics card because it looks pretty fantastic in my opinion. I'm an AMD fan. I really like what they've been doing. Not a big Intel fan. Um, I do think that the new stuff that NVIDIA put out, the 3090, the 3080, pretty phenomenal cards. I wouldn't mind owning one of them either. But I really do want to keep these these desktops that I've built uh, complete AMD builds. I've got a Asus Tough Gaming laptop with a... I'm so proud of it. It's got the 4700H processor in it. That's an 8-core, 16-thread processor and a laptop. It's freaking phenomenal. I love it. And it has an RTX 2060 in it. And it's uh, it's my travel companion. And I travel... Well, I used to travel a lot for work before COVID. And uh, I bought that computer when they first came out. I, know, I guess it was probably maybe March or so whenever I picked that computer up. And it's it's been it's been a good computer too. It's got the RTX 2060 in it. But I'll tell you what, the 3090, damned impressive card, 24 gigs of uh, a VRAM. I mean, I, that's that's phenomenal. I I just can't even wrap my brain around that. But the uh, the 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 3080 looks really really good. Uh, from what I understand, the art, the ray tracing, you know, on the the Nvidia cards is is better than what AMD's been able to put together. But you know, this is a new generation for AMD as far as uh, Big Navi is concerned. So we know that that probably the ray tracing isn't going to be up to to par right now. But um, still, an, an AMD fan, and plus, you know, you're you're going to save a little bit of money if you, if you buy Radian. So I'm not too sure what the future is going to hold. I I think probably I'm going to be looking to purchase a, a 6800 XT within the next three to four months to put in my desktop build here on my office, and I'll probably take this RX 5700 and move it to my other desktop that I built that's running my sim racing rig and my VR right now and then sell my, my 5600 XT. And I may end up upgrading the processor in that one as well, maybe to a 5600. Because uh, from what I understand, it's really, really good as far as, as gaming is concerned. But uh, there, there's so many random topics here, but I'll tell you what, the, the 4000 series, Ryzen 4000 series has been phenomenal. I I love my Asus Tough gaming laptop. It's 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 so fantastic, and it, it has the the Ryzen 4700H processor in it. And then I've also got a ROG Zephyrus, and it has it has the 4700HS processor in it with an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti, and I use that for music. I play music and um, so I've got my keyboard and stuff set up through it. I'm a keys player. I also play guitar and it's been nothing but phenomenal. I run Ableton on it and I run a, a, a setup called Sunday Keys whenever I when I play keys with it and, and it's 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 completely totally changed my sound and how you know how I go about playing music and so that that laptop has been a phenomenal investment and it again it's got the 8 core 16 thread processor in it and Ableton whenever you open up the Sunday Keys suite it generally takes on a normal what would have been a normal laptop you know like a 4 core 8 thread laptop from a year or two ago it would take you know anywhere from two and a half to three minutes for that Ableton software to open up and now I can do it within 30 seconds. Within 30 seconds, I load Sunday keys up on my keys, and and I'm and I'm in there. So, if you guys are looking at 
a laptop, you know, get something with the 4000 series in it right now. They are second to none. I'm loving, loving both of those laptops. So just a, a little bit more to talk about my transition over to, over to PC. I, like I said, I, so I started with, with, with PlayStation and you know, that was kind of my primary whenever the PlayStation 1 came out uh, back in the day. Now, I, I did play, obviously, some Nintendo, some Sega whenever I was a younger younger lad. Uh, in fact, I got my first Nintendo when I was 16. Um, and, and I was, you know, I was a... <laughs> I, I was a kid whenever the Nintendo originally released in, in, like, 1984 or whatever it was, you know. But my parents... They didn't want to spend the money on a Nintendo, and so I never actually got to own my own video games, except for an old Intellivision that we used to have. Um, Till I was old enough to go to work and 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 go and, and go purchase my own gaming system. So when I was 16, I had acquired a job of working at the local. I think it was local Hardee's for a little while, and then I transitioned over and started working at the grocery store. But um, I, I bought several consoles right away. I bought a Nintendo, and um, you know, played with played on the Nintendo for a while, and I was really thrilled to do that. Some of my favorite games there, retro games, you know, the original Ninja Turtles games, obviously some of the Mario games. All of those things were really great. And then, and then, I almost probably within about a month had gone out and acquired a Sega Genesis. Uh, I didn't I didn't buy a Super Nintendo. Uh, I, I went and bought a Sega Genesis and uh, about that time the Sega CD was out and so I purchased a Sega CD and uh, I can remember playing uh, Eternal Champions on that system. Um, I did want a Super Nintendo because I was a big Street Fighter fan and so I, I eventually went out and, and purchased a Super Nintendo console as well. So I had all of these, and it was probably, oh, I don't know, within the next, I'd say, year or two, and I had gone out and bought my first PlayStation 1. And from that point on, I was pretty much a PlayStation guy. I, I, that's really all I was interested in playing on. And then, you know, a little bit of GoldenEye came out, and that was great. But uh, really, you know, PlayStation was where it was at for me. I can remember playing Fighting Force. Um, I can remember playing all the Street Fighter games that they released. Street Fighter Plus Alpha, um, the the 3D games, those were really phenomenal games. I was a big Street Fighter buff. Uh, playing Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 4 was on the, the PlayStation 1. Um, uh, Tenchu, Tenchu was a great game. I really enjoyed Tenchu, Crash Bandicoot. You know, all of these classic games, and they were really, really, really great. And so, you know, fast forward a little bit, PlayStation Two comes out, and I picked up PlayStation Two, fell in love with it. I, I actually fell in love with on the PlayStation Two, Tiger Woods Golf, and I never imagined that I'd be into golf, but man, that game was a lot of fun. And, uh, and Gran Turismo Racing, you know, that was on the PlayStation 1. I, I did some of that in Need for Speed. Um, Need for Speed 3. Oh, man, so, such such good memories of those games. And probably one of the biggest and most influential games, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. You know, man, that Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, Pro Skater 2. Love those. I was also a fan of the, the handhelds. Oh, just, really just about anything, you know anything video games at the time because I didn't get to play them when I was a kid. Um, the, the, the best that I got as far as being a kid was that in television, like I said, which there was a game on that one called Parsec. It was a lot of fun. It was like a space game where you moved up and down and, and shot it at different alien craft that came towards you. And it, it was a lot of fun, but, you know, it, obviously it was, it was not great. Uh, and, and wait, let me take that back. The Intellivision didn't have that game. Uh, the Intellivision. I can't really remember some of the games the Intellivision had. Now we did have a ping. We did have a Pong 
uh, game as well. I forgot about that. We did have a Pong game. That probably was actually our first console because um, my grandpa was kind of into computers and stuff like that and he had acquired an old Pong system and I can remember playing that as a kid on black and white TV. So yeah, that was fun. Um, so let me, I'm getting a little chatty here on the uh, Intellivision, but I forgot. No, Parsec was on the TI. So we had a, a TI computer as well. And and actually, you know, I, I I say that I was a console guy, but I actually started with a computer, to be honest, to be totally honest. I mean, other than the Pong and, and the Intellivision, but it was a TI, uh, the Texas Instruments computer. And then my dad got like a, I think it was like a 486 desktop or something like that. It was probably maybe five years old or something like that. I can remember going to the local Alco, Alco store. I don't know if anybody, if any of y'all know what Alco is, but local Alco, Alco store and um, purchasing games for that system uh, at the Alco store. And those games came with like, you know, there, there'd there be like, like four or five floppy disks, 1.44 megabyte floppy disks. Uh, two games that that definitely ping my memory is Mega Man, which looked completely and utterly horrid. I mean, it was it, it was not pretty. Um, you know, it was pink and blue, and that's what the colors were. And then uh, a, a game called Test Drive, and and that was it was really bad too. But you know that that was about the only way that I was able to play games because mom and dad wouldn't invest in a console. So uh, I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, but there's a lot, there's a lot to share here. I mean, there's a, a lot of history there. And so, you know, fast forward into PlayStation 2 era, uh, really into playing playing the golf game, um, into into anything racing. And you know what? I've kind of come full circle. I'm I just within the last two months, I've gotten back into racing games pretty heavily. And I so much so that I went ahead and purchased a, a force feedback wheel and and built a I built a cockpit and so you know this is <laughs> this is uh, what I what I'm actually spending probably more of my time doing. In fact, I'm behind on the I don't know that I'm going to finish out the battle pass this season for Call of Duty because I've been playing so much more racing games. But, you know, racing was a big deal. I uh, loved the Need for Speed series at the time. And then along came Resident Evil 2. Uh, not 2, excuse me, Resident Evil uh, 4. And I had played some of the Resident Evil games on the PlayStation, Resident Evil 1. I didn't ever play Resident Evil 2, really. I didn't play that until I was older later in life. Um, Resident Evil 1 I thought was good, but I really disliked the controls. So I played through Resident Evil 4, and... Uh, immediately fell in love with that game. Consequently enough, though, by that time I was an adult and I was um, working as a paramedic offshore in the Gulf of Mexico uh, whenever I played that game. And it had been out for a little while. You know, it had already been out on the GameCube. And uh, played that game for while well, I was offshore and, and completed it and just completely and utterly fell in love with that. So kind of sort of in between that time between acquiring PlayStation 2 and, uh, you know, I, I really wasn't much into shooting games, but then I went and played Halo with a friend on Xbox, Xbox 360 at the time, oh, excuse me, Xbox One, not 360 at the time, and um, I played Halo and fell in love with that, Halo 2, and so, you know, I was looking for shooting games too to play, and that's the reason that I came up with, with Resident Evil 4, and then... From that point, I um, from that point I went on and just essentially started eating up as much of the Resident Evil franchise as I could. Fell in love with that. Thought it was really great. Wasn't ready to commit to an Xbox at all. Still was a PlayStation guy at the time, and so I played Resident Evil Code Veronica on the PlayStation 2, and that was really really good. Enjoyed that game a lot. And I think by that time I had acquired a GameCube as well, and so played 
uh, you know, one of the primary games that I fell in love with on the GameCube has, has got to be beyond a shadow of a doubt Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime was so good. And, you know, that's one of the games on the Super Nintendo that I just absolutely loved as well, which was Metroid's uh, Super Metroid. And, you know, also during the time frame that the PlayStation 1 was out, well, you know, there's Castlevania. Castlevania Symphony of the Night just utterly loved, adored that game. Fell in love so much with the Castlevania series at that point that I went back and played some of the originals. I didn't really play those before that. Still didn't love those that much, but, you know, they were good. Um, and, you know, the, the 3D games that they had come out with, uh, Res not Resident, excuse me, uh, Castlevania on the, the 64, the Nintendo 64, and then also the... Uh, Castlevania, I think it's Aria, well, no, not Aria, it's, uh, what was it? I can't think, it was on the PlayStation 2, it was like a 3D, that, that game was fun, I'd have to, I'd have to look up the name of that game, but, um, it was, it was a lot of fun, I enjoyed those games, and so, as you can tell, you know, I've got a really, really significant history in, in console gaming, and, and it just continues, you know, through the, the Xbox 360 era, obviously highly focused on Halo, highly focused on Call of Duty, uh, you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare being a, a complete and utter game changer in the world of, of shooters. That was, you know, uh, such an eye-opening title. And then, you know, fast forward, I, I, I had some friends that were playing games on the computer, and I, I'd, I'd get on the computer and I'd play, you know, Doom here, or I'd, play uh you know halo on the halo one came out on the pc back in the day and you know i just didn't my experience kind of in that time frame was that pcs had problems because you know if i bought a console and i threw a game in guess what it just worked yeah, I didn't have to worry about whether or not I had the, the newest hardware that would run the games and things like that. And So I think now we're kind of this point where, especially with the setup that I've got now, and plus I've got the funds to do it, you know, that, that that's another thing, you know, whenever you're a, a struggling young adult, you've got kids, uh, you know, during the times that I was really playing console, if, if, I, if I invested in something, I, I wanted it to work. Um, I didn't want to have to upgrade or anything like that in order to play the new games that came out and so that's probably one big piece of it but I, I swear I, I swore off any type of PC gaming and then about a year ago I finally finally bit the bullet and I, you know I can't really put my thumb on what I thought it was that that inched me towards the PC uh, well I, I can let me now that I've had an opportunity to say that part of the reason that I moved towards PC was because I owned a PlayStation 4, I owned an Xbox One, and I was traveling a lot for work. And so, you know, I'm hauling around with me uh, this this Xbox or PlayStation, whatever it happened to be at the time, so I could play games in the evening. And I'm like, uh, I should just buy a laptop so that I can play these games. And so, you know, I, I'm looking at that opportunity, and then I'm looking at my games collection which I had pretty much switched to mostly digital at that time. I'm not a... I, I don't like the clutter of media and stuff. I mean, it, it is kind of nice to own the disc, and for a while I was resistant to digital, but I really do enjoy the digital stuff now. Um, it keeps me from... Well, I, I kind of had a little bit of a... I'd go to GameStop and trade things off that I would... And then end up wanting it back, you know. That that was just the conundrum of GameStop. I'm I don't even go to GameStop anymore. Had a lot of friends that worked there. I liked the store, you know. It was kind of fun to go in and visit. But I don't know. I feel better about myself not not dealing with GameStop and the people that work there. It's not their fault. Um, but um, so anyway, fast forward. I I, I kind of looked at my setup and I'm like, well, I, you know, I've got. I've got Call of Duty on both my PlayStation and my Xbox. I've got, um, you know, I've got all of these different games on different consoles, and, and I was buying them twice or maybe even three times because I had a Switch. I really like my Switch, so I will make one caveat. I love my Switch. Uh, I use it whenever I, you know, when I'm on the plane because it's a pain in the butt to pull out my laptop on the plane. 
but ultimately, you know, the reason I switched to PC was I felt like the platform had matured based on everything that I had seen. And on top of that, you know, all of the games that I play, I can just essentially go ahead and, it, it, you know, start from wherever I left off. Depend, you know, it doesn't matter whether I'm on my desktop. I have two desktops that I built. You know, I could be on either one of those and, and be at the same spot. I don't have to worry about getting, you know, two Call of Duty accounts leveled up um, or three Call of Duty accounts leveled up. I and if I'm out of town and I'm on my laptop, which is just as almost as powerful as my desktops, obviously it's a little bit of give and take there. But um, I, you know, I can I can pick up where I left off. So for me, PC going to PC really made sense. And then now that I've been doing it, I I just love it. I I can't think it's 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 one of those things that I think a lot about. You know, I I think about my PCs. I I enjoy them. I like to build them. Building PCs is a lot of fun, um, and, and you know I like to build things, so it's kind of in my blood. It's the way that I, I like to tinker, and so you know doing your own. And so I, you know, and that's another thing I would say to people. You know, if you do think that you're wanting to maybe get into PC, build your own PC. Don't go out and buy a, a pre-built PC. You know, take take the time to learn, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. It really can, but there's a lot of good resources out there. Uh, you know, a lot of good tech YouTubers out there that can help, but um, I, I can't tell you how satisfying it is that I built both these PCs that I'm that I own uh, and that I play with. Uh, I built, and in fact, my my cockpit for my racing sim. I, I I do a little bit of woodworking. I built it too. You know, it's, there's something about getting your hands dirty and and building something for yourself. Uh, games are fun, but also you know, doing something productive. And um, so anyway, you know that that's kind of where we're at right now. We are. I'm loving, I'm loving PC. PC is so fantastic. And you know it's it's. Uh, I I can see nothing but them getting better. I because you know all of the consoles are kind of going to that same architecture which they already have. Um, and, and the exclusives are, I mean, heck, I, I can buy Horizon Zero Dawn, you know, for my for my PC now. You might have to wait a little bit longer, but I think at some point that stuff is going to is gonna be available. And, it, and we know that all of the Microsoft games are going to go. So, anyway, that's that. A lot of fun. Well, I'm going to go play with a friend of mine. So I hope everybody has a great day.